Hey, it's Dave from Bullpen Cycles, and this is a 1980 Suzuki SP400. Today, we're gonna see how she rips. Gas, key, choke, Where's the button? And what's this crazy thing? Oh. oh my God! You gotta kick it! We have this 1980 Suzuki SP400. This series is what took the place after they started winding down the two-stroke TS series. It was preceded by the SP370 and followed by an SP500 before it was replaced with the DS series. This particular model, the SP400, they made one year only, 1980. Front and rear drum brakes, 280 pounds, single cylinder, overhead cam, twin shock, carburation, top speed, they say, of 90 miles an hour. I doubt it. The speedometer only goes to 80. When these big Japanese thumpers started replacing two-stroke, each manufacturer had their own little technique for starting. Yamaha, like the XT500 and the TT500, they had a little window here and a decompression release, and you'd kick it slowly rotating it until a yellow dot lined up in the window and then you kick it and it would usually light up if you got good you could do it all in one smooth motion this one's a little different this is a lever has a cable that holds open the exhaust valve so you got to find where the exhaust valve stays open then rotate the motor with your foot till the lever snaps shut. That's just past top dead center. Now you're on the downstroke. And if you look where my foot is, I was playing with it in the last quarter of the circumference. I wasn't lifting my foot up all the way. Now when I lift my foot up, I'll get a full rotation. Now, I don't know if that's necessary. You could find top dead center up here lift your foot up you're still on a down stroke so is it really necessary you're gonna get a full kick either way but it's just what I do the other thing is some people hold the lever open and run through it a couple of times to quote clear the junk out well, I don't know if that does anything because you're not sucking a charge through the carburetor. It's like trying to kick a motor with the spark plug out. It's just going to suck out the spark plug hole and back in the spark plug hole. But in this case, it's going to piss out the exhaust valve that's hanging open and then suck back in. So does it do anything? I don't know. But it's what some people do. So we're going to see if she lights. There it popped out. Now usually the first time you do this, you get nothing. We'll see. Well, I almost had it. 
There's my click. Still have the choke on. if I can do that now that I've had some heat we got no choke hold it in where it sticks popped up now now I don't have any choke we'll see all right I'm gonna give it choke hold it in till it sticks Pops up. Takes the choke off. This is what this bike is made for. I wouldn't so much call it a single track bike. Because if you dump it in the sand on a hill and then it floods out, then you gotta go through all that crap to start it when it's flooded. That probably bites. But gravel roads where you can wind it up and bump and, and I got DOT legal knobbies on it that are supposed to be okay in the sand here in Florida. We got some rain. This road got washed out. I know, you guys wanted me to do a rooster tail. That ain't happening. I always miss this turn. This is before the bikes got really tall. So if you're not a confident on the tall bikes 
and you learn how to kickstart them properly it's not a bad ride at all yeah there's neutral 